All right, guys. So the previous video went over uh, all these equations that we need to for series and parallel connections of capacitors. If we take a look at uh, the first questions here, let's just scroll up here. So first one, does current actually flow through the capacitor? Well, that's a yes or no question, but the answer is no. Electrons basically build up on one plate. They cause the dielectric electrons to shift over and they rip electrons off the opposite plate. So there is current flow within the circuit, but it's not necessarily flowing through the dielectric. Um, so does it flow through the, the capacitor? No. Number two, what two factors determine the capacitive reactance of a capacitor? Well, looking at this equation for XC, it looks like we have two pi, which is the 360 degrees rotation of the generator. Then we have frequency and capacitance. So the two things that can affect how much charge a capacitor can hold would be the capacitance and the frequency. Number three, how many degrees are the current and voltage out of phase in a purely capacitive circuit? Same as with an inductive circuit, they are 90 degrees out of phase compared to a resistive load. Uh, does the current in a purely capacitive circuit lead or lag the applied voltage? Well, the mnemonic that we have here is the Iceman where current leads and the voltage lags. Uh, the way to think of this is that current has to actually flow in the circuit over to the capacitor and then you're going to have a voltage develop across the capacitor. So current leads and the voltage lags. Okay, number five, a 30 microfarad capacitor is connected to 240, 60 hertz and we're trying to find the current flow. So this is just sim simply Ohm's law. We have 240 volts and we need to find the reactance in the circuit if we have that one capacitor there. So the reactance is XC uh, is equal to one over two pi FC. So you put into your calculator, try and do it in one shot there. You put another double bracket on the side here. So it's two times pi times 60 times 30 microfarads. So you put in 30 exponent negative six, close brackets. You end up with 88.42 ohms. And if we have 240 divided by 88.42 ohms, that gives you a circuit current of 2.71 amps. Okay, next one. Uh, we've got a capacitor at 1250 volts, 1000 hertz. Current flow is disgusting 80 amps. Uh, what's the capacitor, capacitance of the capacitor? Uh, so first of all, we have to find XC. So we'll take the 1250 volts divided by the current and that will give us the reactance of 15.625. Then we pump that into the capacitance equation. And we have one divided by two times pi times a thousand times 15.625. And it gives you 10.186 microfarads. Now your calculator, you can note here that calculator may give you 1.01859 times 10 to the negative five. You may have the engineering button, ENG, on your calculator. And by pressing that, it will simply move it one decimal place and give you the engineering format for that answer. Okay, next one guys, on number seven. Uh, usually if you have the, the, volt, the, the capacitor in a circuit where the capacitance rating is double what the circuit rating voltage is, um, then it's probably gonna last eight times longer. This is from the textbook. They don't back this up with a calculator. So if anybody finds uh, an equation that will provide us with this answer uh, and how they came up with eight times longer, I would really appreciate it. Number eight, capacitor is connected to 277 volts, 400 hertz. Circuit current is 12 amps. So be careful you go, don't get tripped up. This is 400 hertz. Find your XC first. Voltage divided by current gives us 23.08 ohms of reactants. And when you pump that into the equation for a capacitance, then you end up with 17.24 times 10 to the negative six, or 17.24 microfarads. Number nine, a capacitor has a voltage rating of 1,000 volts peak, and can, it, can you put it into a 600 volt RMS circuit? Well, we know that 600 volts times 1.414 gives you 848 volts peak, so it looks like we're good to go there. We're well with, within the range of 1,000 volts. Number 10, 35 microfarad capacitor. Easy now, what's going on there? Sorry, guys. Number 10, 35 microfarad capacitors connected into um, a 120 volt, 60 hertz line. How much current's gonna flow in the circuit? So again, we gotta find, we have the voltage, we need to find the reactance. 
We're going to put in 35 microfarads. Remember the EXP button does the times 10 for you. 35 EXP or EE button to the negative 6. Gives you 75.79 ohms. 120 divided by that reactance gives us 1.58 amps. Okay, number 11, a capacitor is connected into a 2860 hertz circuit. Ammeter shows us 2.6 amps, so we're looking for the capacitance value. Well, we'll take the 28 divided by the current of 2.6, gives us a reactance of 80 ohms, and when we pump that into the equation for capacitance, that gives us 33.16 microfarads. Okay, then we have two questions, one on series, one on parallel here. So if they're in series, remember that you're creating a smaller capacitor. You're distancing the plates. So we now need to use the reciprocal equation. You can see here that the value has got to be less than 10 microfarads, which it is. It's 5 microfarads. Pump that into this equation here, 5 times 10 to the negative 6 times frequency at 60 hertz times 2 pi gives you 530.52 ohms. 120 divided by that reactance gives us 0 0.226 amps. And if we're looking for the VARs, that's just power. Just, you know, just a different form of power. It's potential energy held in the capacitor. Voltage times current, 120 times 0.226 amps gives us 27.12 VARs C. Okay, if they are in parallel, you create a larger capacitor by placing them in parallel. You basically increase the surface area of the capacitor. So we have the, the capacitance charge on the first one, 50 microfarads, plus 75 microfarads on the second one, plus 20 microfarads on the third, gives us a total of 145 microfarads. Put that into this equation here. 2 times pi times 60 times 145 exponent or EE button negative 6, and do the reciprocal of that, gives you 18.29 ohms, and 120 volts divided by that reactance gives us 6.56 amps. Okay, rocking here. You can stop the video at any point. Sorry for being so uh, so quick. Just want that 15 minutes to do each of the videos. I want to make sure I get everything in here. You can stop and start it as you go, though. Uh, the VAR C, again, is just voltage times current. So that gives us 120 times 6.56 gives us 787.2 bar C. Okay, then we have the chart here. At the bottom of the chart, you may want to put these notes in. We're going off of this equation here. XC is equal to 1 over 2 times pi times frequency times capacitance. So if you put it into the pi chart there, you can find all the individual values. So you can find your capacitance with this equation. This is the equation that we've been memorizing already and you can also find the frequency. I'm mostly going to give you the questions in microfarads because those are the most prominent you're going to find but nano is 10 to the negative 9 and pico is 10 to the negative 12 so this one right here pico is 10 to the negative 12. Okay, so once you've finished off the chart then take a look at the values that are here okay this one's at 60 Hertz 400 hertz, you can see that the reactance goes up, right? Kilohertz, kilo ohms. Okay, and all the way through. And just uh, be careful with this one. This one's 1.693 kilo ohms. Excellent. All right, guys, thanks for your patience. Uh, after this, you can go on to uh, the next video. Uh, the next video will be on series RLCs.